This video is about when you move on after walking away. I'll explain the process of effectively moving on when you've walked away from someone. To find out more, please stay tuned to this video. Welcome to the SCG Show. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and turn your life around with my sponsor, BetterHelp. The link is in the description below. Did you know some people never actually move on despite walking away? Because they harp on and on about their exes, sometimes even decades after a divorce or a separation. They'll say, I can't believe the way they treated me. So unfair. I can't believe how they acted towards me, the nerve of these people. God, the things that I had to put up with them. Unbelievable. What does moving on mean? In my humble and honest opinion, moving on is in four stages, which I'll highlight in this video. Going no contact, six months minimum no contact, planning your future without them, and then eventually dating again. I know this because I've moved on from toxic relationships I've walked away from, and so have plenty of the viewers on my channel. Now I know there's some extreme circumstances, such as co-parenting, perhaps you still work for the same company, or even you're in business with each other. But moving on does not mean getting a divorce and living with your partner still. Or worst of all, supporting your partner financially or emotionally still. It certainly does not mean jumping back into bed with each other when you feel like it. Moving on means moving on. It's as simple as that. Just the other day, a woman I know was still harping on about her ex-husband she walked away from from over 10 years ago. She was still moaning about how hard done she was, how much of a scumbag he was, etc. But when she divorced him, she got an amazing financial settlement her children were adults, she didn't have to worry about them, and she's actually never had to work again, she's retired. Look, he wasn't a millionaire, by the way. But despite losing a lot of money in the divorce, her ex-husband kept the house, still is financially comfortable, and has a new partner who lives with him and has moved on. He never mentions his ex-wife, nor thinks about her. Why, you ask? Because he moved on. So they both separated, she can't stop talking about him and thinking about him 10 years later, he, yeah, he had to pay a lot in the divorce. Yeah, he kept the house, but he's dating someone else. He's moved on. He never talks about his ex. You need to do this too. There is no point in walking away, but mentally, emotionally, and sometimes even physically, still staying attached to your ex. Let's continue. If you're enjoying this video, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and support the SCG show by becoming a member. The link is in the description below. Assuming you've taken the brave decision to finally walk away from your partner, it's time to cut the cord. It's time to go no contact permanently and for good. What is no contact? The no contact rule refers to cutting off all contact with an ex following a breakup. And it's the best method for moving on too. It should last for around 90 days, which I'll touch on in the next point. That includes no texting, no calling, no social media. In the last few years, I've had two breakups with serious girlfriends. One was a narcissist in 2019. The other was a shorter relationship in 2021. I applied the no contact rule to both women, even though the most recent relationship was more her deciding to end it. Why no contact is important. You'll never successfully move on from your ex if you're in contact with them all the time. I made the fatal mistake of not blocking my toxic ex a few years back when I decided to walk away for the first time. I was free, but like all toxic people, they hoover you back in. I get where I went wrong. Trust me, SCG. I will fight hard to make this work between us, she said. I'll do whatever it takes to make you happy. You wait and see how much I've changed. Frankly, that was all BS. And slowly and surely, the relationship when I got back with her became much more toxic and way more negative. But I was trapped and was fed a bunch of lies, assuming she'd change when really all she missed was my supply and attention. Therefore, it is absolutely vital for you to go no contact whether your ex is toxic or not. This is the first step in a thousand steps more. You already had the courage to decide to walk away from them and you know in your heart that enough was truly enough. Why not press that block button? Why not delete their contact details? If you must speak, Keep it to emails or through solicitors, lawyers. Your time on their contact list is finished, as is theirs. 
It's a mutual thing. And even if they're not insisting that it is, treat it like one. You must, and I know it's hard, but it's the first step. You must, must go no contact. Firstly, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about my official channel sponsor, BetterHelp. I've personally used BetterHelp and I found it to be so effective for completely turning my life around for the better. BetterHelp is an online portal that provides direct-to-consumer access to behavioral health services. The online counseling and therapy services are provided through web-based interaction such as phone and even text communication. BetterHelp gives you four live sessions a month and unlimited messaging in between sessions, as well as access to the group therapy webinars that get updated each and every week. You can sign up for the BetterHelp online counseling service below. By using that link, you'll be supporting the SCG Show community. So turn your life around with my channel sponsor, BetterHelp. The link is in the description below. I know what you're thinking. I can't last 24 hours, let alone going 90 days, no contact with my partner. As a former addict to gambling, who turned sober in 2019 myself and has remained clean, I'll apply the same logic. Willpower will not work in this instance, as you're craving their attention, their voice, their everything. You want to clear what you want to say to them. It's like going on a fad diet. You keep it up for a while, but soon you'll eventually fall off the wagon and start eating junk again. Willpower is not how I got clean and sober, education was, and that is what you must do in this regard. Why did you originally walk away from your ex to begin with? Only you know the answer to this question, and there may be several answers. But to use me as an example with the toxic ex a few years back, it was because the relationship was indeed toxic. She was a narcissist too, and she had four years of my life wasted trying to improve us together and get better. I failed, I held my hands up and walked away knowing there was no saving her nor the relationship at all. I took the time to educate myself on relationships, narcissism, red flags and so on. It was the same as gambling and addiction. I got addicted and was fascinated. Gambling is designed to get you hooked, to keep you hooked and to think that you're winning and enjoying yourself when really you're wasting your time, energy and losing your money. A toxic relationship or an unfulfilling one is the same premise. Through society pressure, Disney movies or a manipulative partner, you're being sold a lie that is better to stay with them. Just move in together. Just get engaged. Just buy that house. Just get married. Just have kids. All will be better when these things happen with your partner, right? Or your ex. Wrong. Each one is more commitment. Each one is more responsibility and a recipe for disaster and is a ploy by a toxic person to keep you stuck with them with more and more ties, more anchors. My point is, educating yourself on why you left and reminding yourself constantly is the best way to get through this 90 day period. I guarantee you, just like that, those 90 days will pass and it will get easier, not better, it will get easier over time. When you begin to make important life plans without that person no longer in your life anymore to consider, things start moving in the right direction. Currently I'm in the process of moving home, which has been very stressful, but an important step for me and my life. When I dated my ex, I had her in the back of my mind, and we actually agreed eventually to move in with each other when the time was right. So I used to look at potential properties that would accommodate us both, had enough space and location-wise suited us both. Yet the moment we split, I became extremely selfish and looked for a home that accommodated me only, because I'm buying it. And I planned my life as a single man, but one looking to eventually welcome the right sort of person in my life when the time was right. When you make your plans without your ex and your thoughts, you can move on. But don't make this mistake. There's a guy I know who walked away from his relationship a few years back, as it was going nowhere, and his ex was negative. He followed the no contact rule, split amicably and never spoke to her. But the mistake he made was he made sure he would not move on with his plans. This man rented a property close to where his ex was living after the breakup, turned down job opportunities to stay near her 
and even turned down dating opportunities as well. His mindset was completely messed up, as he metaphorically left the door open for her to venture back into his life. She at any moment may come back, and we may have a better relationship, he told himself. He was wrong. She moved on, left the city, and is now married with children. This man put his life on hold for five years to accommodate the possibility of his ex coming back into his life. We all can be susceptible to making this mistake. Oh, I cannot date just yet. Can't book that vacation or trip just yet. Whoa, I can't buy that car just yet. I cannot be going out just yet. I can't be going to bars. I can't be drinking. I can't be on a dating app. Make your plans because life is short and see them through. If you don't make plans without your ex in them, you will never be able to move on. Hey, if you're enjoying the SCG show, feel free to make a donation to support my work via PayPal. The link is in the description below. In my opinion, when you start dating again, that's a guarantee that you're going to successfully move on. There are so many people who walk away from relationships and rule out dating. Oh God, I'm never dating again. Never going on Tinder again. I'll never be married again. I will never have another partner again. I will never find anyone attractive like them again or connect with them like that again. Remember this, please remember you're walking away initially because that person does not make you happy and the relationship is unfulfilling, negative or toxic. But also you walk away to attract someone genuine, better suited to accommodate and complement your life. Despite it being very short-lived and logistics being a massive reason for us splitting up, temporarily I found love again in my recent ex. We were so happy together, it was wonderful we got along. We saw a future together. Okay, look, it didn't work out. But even still, I managed to move on eventually from my toxic ex, who was a narcissist. And I can't begin to tell you how pure bliss that was doing so. You're not going to move on harping on about your ex, complaining about your ex, comparing your ex to everyone, continuously playing the victim or wanting to be the victim. You're not going to move on if you do not date again, or at least try. So always, even though it can be challenging, quite scary, date with this mentality. Please do not date with the idea of getting revenge, rebounding, or trying to prove them wrong, or rubbing it in their face, or making them jealous. Do so because you genuinely want companionship, you want affection, you want more, you want a relationship. You want someone to enter your lifestyle, your frame, your world, etc. They do not want to be a rebound, trust me, and most people will be able to figure that out fairly quickly. They want to be the person, hopefully, you have a long, healthy, sustaining, more positive, happy relationship with. I know it's challenging, I get frustrated with it as well, and it can be exhausting, but please consider dating again. Here's a quick word from my sponsor, Aura. Do you know who needs to invest in digital security? Anyone with something worth protecting. And if you're watching this video, I'm guessing that's you. Because like most Americans, you've spent a good part of your life building a life worth protecting. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aura, who is sponsoring the SCG show. Aura is a digital security solution that protects your online accounts, connection and devices with one simple subscription. For as low as $10 a month, you'll get alerted to fraud and threats fast. Like if your online accounts or passwords were linked online, or if someone tries to open a bank account in your name or social security number. Aura will protect your devices from malware and encrypt your Wi-Fi connection so you can shop, bank and stream online securely. All plans come with $1 million in identity theft insurance to help recover eligible losses and experienced US-based customer support that's got your back. For hardworking Americans who've worked their whole lives to build a life worth protecting, I strongly recommend Aura. So if you want a secure online presence from hackers, scammers, and noisy advertising companies, go to Aura.com slash SCG show, and when you use my link below, you'll get up to 40% off all plans. So sign up to Aura today. The link is in the description below. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe.